My brother has a Facebook page called Believers Club. It's where we read a book every week. So people join this club to read motivational books or whatever book that he assigned for that week or that month. But every day he um, designates someone to give a devotion day. And my devotion day was day 55. And the subject of my devotion day was, have you ever been broken? And my subject again was, have you ever been broken? And I think this is very important for 2020. 2019, it has been a very difficult year for a lot of people. We've seen a lot of people pass away. Uh, uh, people had loss of jobs. Just a lot of things happened in 2019. But 2020, I think it's going to be a very important year for everybody. I call it the double door year. A lot of doors are going to be open this year. So I'm going to tell you what my devotion day 55 meant when I said, have you ever been broken? And to understand this, I had to read Mark, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's about the feeding of the 5,000 men. So in Matthew chapter 14, verse 13 through 21, I'm not going to read these verses, but in each one of these chapters, there's something significant in it. For instance, Matthew, it talked about the 5,000 men be, besides the women and children. So they didn't even count the women and children. They just counted the 5,000 men. But then you go to Mark chapter 6, verse 30 through 42. It talks about the same thing, but it tells you how they put them in groups of 50 before Jesus fed them. He put them in groups of 50. Then you jump to Luke chapter 9 verse 12 through 17. And he talks about that again, how he set them down in groups of 50. But then one of the most important ones is in John chapter six, verse one through 14. And all of these are talking about the same thing, but you got to pick up little things in each one of these chapters. So John chapter six, verse one through 14, it mentioned that the food came from a boy, from a little boy, that had five small barley loaves and two small fish. So I got six different lessons out of this, but you can continue and you can find more lessons from this parable. Lesson one, it says Jesus' disciples told him, the disciples told Jesus that he, sh he should send a crowd away because the crowd was hungry. And Jesus' response, he said, feed them. What do you have? So I believe that Jesus is letting us know that we must first recognize what we have before we can receive any blessings. So the second lesson in this is we notice that uh, they counted the 5,000 men. And that was all that was counted. But the five loaves and the two fish came from a little boy that wasn't counted. So I believe that Jesus is letting us know that sometimes he uses people that others don't count. So lesson number three says that the Jesus received the five loaves and two fishes. He told his disciples to put the crowd in groups of 50. So can you imagine trying to put a group of 5,000 men, not to mention the women and children. So you got about 15,000 people that you had to put in groups of 50. So this is, this is gonna take some time. So I believe that Jesus is saying, even though we're hungry, we must first get ourselves in order to be able to withstand the blessings when they come. As David said in Psalms 23, my cup runneth over. When God, when God blesses us, he gives us more than enough. In lesson four of this, it says, after the crowd was seated and in groups, Jesus gave thanks. He blessed the food after they were seated and everything. So I believe that Jesus is saying to us that we must be thankful for what we have, even though it seems as if it's not enough. And then we look at lesson five. It say that after Jesus blessed the bread, fish 
he then broke it. And every time he broke it, it multiplied. So I believe that Jesus is saying that sometimes we must be broken in life in order for us to multiply. And the last lesson, which is lesson number six, it says, after Jesus broke the bread and fish, he passed it to his disciples to give to the crowd. I believe that Jesus is, is saying, don't wait for me to bring you a blessing because sometimes your blessings may come from the hands of someone else. So if you're waiting on Jesus to handpick you and bring this to you, well, you're going to wait a long time. So you're going to die waiting. So if you continue reading through this parable, you will notice that there is a lot of lessons to be learned. Even when he went on the mountains after he did this blessing, he noticed that there was going to be trouble. Whenever you do something big in your life, get ready because people are going to hate on you. You're going to have people want what you have. You're going to have a lot of troubles. You notice that when Jesus did those small things, he was okay. It's when he did that big miracle. He fed 5,000 men, not to mention women and children. So 15,000 was fed with five loaves and two fish. Now, this is a problem. So <laughs> he knew it. So that's why he went on the mountain. And after each devotional day, we leave a prayer. In my prayer, it goes like this. Dear Heavenly Father, we would like to thank you for allowing us to see another day. And it's days like this that we should take some time and look around and see how blessed we really are. But with blessing comes burdens and burdens oppositions and through oppositions lies opportunities that would have never existed without the struggles. So God, thank you for our struggles, for they remind us that we haven't been defeated. And thank you for our lives and all the things that you have done and all the things that you will do for us during this lifetime. In Jesus name we pray, amen.